Deborah, the woman judge. After Ehud died, the people of Israel again did what the Lord said was wrong. So he let Jabin, a king of Canaan, defeat Israel. Jabin ruled in the city of Hazor. Sisera was the commander of Jabin's army. Sisera lived in Harosheth Hagoim. He had 900 iron chariots and was very cruel to the people of Israel for 20 years. So they cried to the Lord for help. There was a prophetess named Deborah. She was the wife of Lapidoth. She was judge of Israel at that time. Deborah would sit under the palm tree of Deborah. This was between the cities of Ramah and Bethel, in the mountains of Ephraim. And the people of Israel would come to her to settle their arguments. Deborah sent a message to a man named Barak. He was the son of Abinoam. Barak lived in the city of Kadesh, which is in the area of Naphtali. Deborah said to Barak, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go and gather ten thousand men of Naphtali and Zebulun. Lead them to Mount Tabor. I will make Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, come to you. Sisera, his chariots, and his army will meet you at the Kishon River. I will help you to defeat Sisera there. Then Barak said to Deborah, I will go if you will go with me. But if you will not go with me, I won't go. Of course I will go with you, Deborah answered. But you will not get credit for the victory. The Lord will let a woman defeat Sisera. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. At Kadesh, Barak called the people of Zebulun and Naphtali together. From them, he gathered ten thousand men to follow him. Deborah went with Barak also. Now Heber the Kenite had left the other Kenite people. The Kenites were descendants of Hobab, Moses' brother-in-law. Heber had put up his tent by the great tree in Zananim. This is near Kadesh. Then Sisera was told that Barak son of Abinoam had gone up to Mount Tabor. So Sisera gathered his 900 iron chariots and all the men with him. They went from Harosheth Hagoyim to the Kishon River. Then Deborah said to Barak, Get up. Today is the day the Lord will help you defeat Sisera. You know the Lord has already cleared the way for you. So Barak led 10,000 men down from Mount Tabor. He and his men attacked Sisera and his men. During the battle the Lord confused Sisera and his army and chariots. So Barak and his men used their swords to defeat Sisera's army. But Sisera left his chariot and ran away on foot. Barak and his men chased Sisera's chariots and army to Harosheth Hagoyim. They used their swords to kill all of Sisera's men. Not one of them was left alive. But Sisera himself ran away. He came to the tent where Jael lived. She was the wife of Heber, one of the Kenite family groups. Heber's family was at peace with Jabin king of Hazor. Jael went out to meet Zisira. She said to him, Come into my tent, master. Come in. Don't be afraid. So Zisira went into Jael's tent, and she covered him with a rug. Zisira said to Jael, I am thirsty. Please give me some water to drink. So she opened a leather bag in which she kept milk and gave him a drink. Then she covered him up. Then Zisira said to Jael, Go stand at the entrance to the tent. If anyone comes and asks you, Is anyone here? Say, No but Jael, the wife of Heber, took a tent peg and a hammer. She quietly went to see Sira. Since he was very tired, he was sleeping. She hammered the tent peg through the side of Sisera's head and into the ground. And so Sisera died. Then Barak came by Jael's tent, chasing Sisera. Jael went out to meet him and said, Come. I will show you the man you are looking for. So Barak entered her tent. There Sisera lay dead, with the tent peg in his head. On that day God defeated Jabin king of Canaan in the sight of Israel. Israel became stronger and stronger against Jabin king of Canaan. Finally, they destroyed him. The Song of Deborah On that day Deborah and Barak son of Abinoam sang this song, the leaders led Israel. The people volunteered to go to battle. Praise the Lord! Listen, kings. Pay attention, rulers. I myself will sing to the Lord. I will make music to the Lord, the God of Israel. Lord, in the past you came from Edom. You marched from the land of Edom, and the earth shook. The skies rained, and the clouds dropped water. The mountains shook before the Lord, the God of Mount Sinai. They shook before the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar son of Anath, in the days of jail, the main roads were empty. Travelers went on the back roads. 
there were no warriors in Israel until I, Deborah, arose. I arose to be a mother to Israel. At that time they chose to follow new gods. Because of this, enemies fought us at our city gates. No one could find a shield or a spear among the forty thousand men of Israel. My heart is with the commanders of Israel. They volunteered freely from among the people. Praise the Lord. You who ride on white donkeys and sit on saddle blankets, listen. And you who walk along the road, listen. Listen to the sound of the singers at the watering holes. There they tell about the victories of the Lord. They tell about the victories of the Lord's warriors in Israel. Then the Lord's people went down to the city gates. Wake up, wake up, Deborah. Wake up, wake up, sing a song. Get up, Barak. Go capture your enemies, son of Abinoam. Then the men who were left came down to the important leaders. The Lord's people came down to me with strong men. They came from Ephraim in the mountains of Amalek. Benjamin was among the people who followed you. From the family group of Machir in West Manasseh, the commanders came down. And from Zebulun came those men who lead with an officer's staff. The princes of Issachar were with Deborah. The people of Issachar were loyal to Barak. They followed him into the valley. The Reubenites thought hard about what they would do. Why did you stay by the sheepfold? Was it to hear the music played for your sheep? The Reubenites thought hard about what they would do. The people of Gilead stayed east of the Jordan River. People of Dan, why did you stay by the ships? The people of Asher stayed at the seashore. They stayed at their safe harbors. But the people of Zebulun risked their lives. So did the people of Naphtali on the battlefield. The kings came, and they fought. At that time the kings of Canaan fought at Tonich, by the waters of Megiddo. But they took away no silver or possessions of Israel. The stars fought from heaven. From their paths, they fought Sisera. The Kishon River swept Sisera's men away, that old river, the Kishon River. March on, my soul, with strength. Then the horses' hooves beat the ground. Galloping, galloping go Sisera's mighty horses. May the town of Meraz be cursed, said the angel of the Lord bitterly curse its people, because they did not come to help the Lord. They did not fight the strong enemy. May Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, be blessed above all women who live in tents. Sisera asked for water, but Jael gave him milk. In a bowl fit for a ruler, she brought him cream. Jael reached out and took the tent peg. Her right hand reached for the workman's hammer. And she hit Sisera. She smashed his head. She crushed and pierced the side of his head. At Jael's feet he sank. He fell, and he lay there. At her feet he sank. He fell. Where Sisera sank, there he fell, dead. Sisera's mother looked out through the window. She looked through the curtains. She asked, Why is Sisera's chariot so late in coming? Why are sounds of his chariot's horses delayed? The wisest of her servant ladies answer her. And Sisera's mother says to herself, Surely they are taking the possessions of the people they defeated. Surely they are dividing those things among themselves. A girl or two is being given to each soldier. Maybe Sisera is taking pieces of dyed cloth. Maybe they are even taking pieces of dyed, embroidered cloth for the necks of the victors. Let all your enemies die this way, Lord. But let all the people who love you be powerful like the rising sun. So there was peace in the land for forty years. The Midianites attack Israel. Again the people of Israel did what the Lord said was wrong. So for seven years the Lord let the people of Midian rule Israel. The Midianites were very powerful and were cruel to the Israelites. So the Israelites made hiding places in the mountains. They also hid in caves and safe places. Whenever the Israelites planted crops, the Midianites, Amalekites and other peoples from the east would come and attack them. These people camped in the land. And they destroyed the crops that the Israelites had planted. They did this as far as the land near Gaza. The people left nothing for Israel to eat. They left them no sheep, cattle, or donkeys. The Midianites came up and camped in the land. They brought their tents and their animals with them. They were like swarms of locusts. There were so many people and camels they could not be counted. These people came into the land to ruin it. Israel became very poor because of the Midianites. So the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. 
the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help against the Midianites. So the Lord sent a prophet to them. The prophet said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I brought you out of Egypt, the land of slavery. I saved you from the people of Egypt. And I saved you from all the people of Canaan. I forced them out of their land. And I gave it to you. Then I said to you, I am the Lord your God. You will live in the land of the Amorites, but you must not worship their gods. But you did not obey me. The angel of the Lord visits Gideon. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under an oak tree at Ophrah. The oak tree belonged to Joash, who was one of the Abbey's right people. Joash was the father of Gideon. Gideon was separating some wheat from the chaff in a wine press. Gideon did this to keep the wheat from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Then Gideon said, Pardon me, sir. If the Lord is with us, why are we having so many troubles? Our ancestors told us he did miracles. They told us the Lord brought them out of Egypt. But now he has left us. He has allowed the Midianites to defeat us. The Lord turned to Gideon and said, You have the strength to save the people of Israel. Go and save them from the Midianites. I am the one who is sending you. But Gideon answered, Pardon me, Lord. How can I save Israel? My family group is the weakest in Manasseh. And I am the least important member of my family. The Lord answered him, I will be with you. It will seem as if you are fighting only one man. Then Gideon said to the Lord, If you are pleased with me, give me proof. Show me that it is really you talking with me. Please wait here. Do not go away until I come back to you. Let me bring my offering and set it in front of you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you come back. So Gideon went in and cooked a young goat. He also took about twenty quarts of flour and made bread without yeast. Then he put the meat into a basket. And he put the broth from the boiled meat into a pot. He brought out the meat, the broth and the bread without yeast. He brought the food to the angel of the Lord. Gideon gave it to him under the oak tree. The angel of God said to Gideon, Put the meat and the bread without yeast on that rock over there. Then pour the broth on them. And Gideon did as he was told. The angel of the Lord had a stick in his hand. He touched the meat and the bread with the end of the stick. Then fire jumped up from the rock. The meat and the bread were completely burned up. And the angel of the Lord disappeared. Then Gideon understood he had been talking to the angel of the Lord. So Gideon cried, Lord God. I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to Gideon, Calm down. Don't be afraid. You will not die. So Gideon built an altar there to worship the Lord. Gideon named the altar the Lord is peace. It still stands at Ophra, where the Abbey's rites live. Gideon tears down the altar of Baal. That same night the Lord spoke to Gideon. The Lord said, Take the bull that belongs to your father and a second bull seven years old. Pull down your father's altar to Baal. Cut down the Asherah idol beside it. Then build an altar to the Lord your God. Build it on this high ground. Lay its stones in the right order. Then kill and burn the bull on this altar. Use the wood from the Asherah idol to burn your offering. So Gideon got ten of his servants. And he did what the Lord had told him to do. But Gideon was afraid that his family and the men of the city might see him. So he did it at night, not in the daytime. The men of the city got up the next morning. They saw that the altar for Baal had been destroyed. And they saw that the Asherah idol beside it had been cut down. They also saw the altar Gideon had built. And they saw the bull that had been sacrificed on it. The men of the city looked at each other and asked, Who did this? They asked many questions and looked for the person who had done those things. Someone told them, Gideon son of Joash did this. So they said to Joash, Bring your son out. He has pulled down the altar of Baal. He has cut down the Asherah idol beside it. So your son must die. But Joash spoke to the angry crowd around him. He said, Are you going to take Baal's side? Are you going to defend Baal? Anyone who takes Baal's side will be killed by morning. If Baal is a god, let him fight for himself. It's his altar that has been pulled down. So on that day Gideon got the name Jerub Baal. The name means let Baal fight against him. They named him this because Gideon pulled down Baal's altar. Gideon defeats Midian. 
All the Midianites, the Amalekites and other peoples from the east joined together. They came across the Jordan River and camped in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord entered Gideon. Gideon blew a trumpet to call the Abbey's rites to follow him. He sent messengers to all of Manasseh. The people of Manasseh were called to follow Gideon. Gideon also sent messengers to the people of Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali. They also went up to meet Gideon and his men. Then Gideon said to God, You said you would help me save Israel. I will put some wool on the threshing floor. Let there be dew only on the wool. But let all of the ground be dry. Then I will know what you said is true. I will know that you will use me to save Israel. And that is just what happened. Gideon got up early the next morning and squeezed the wool. He got a full bowl of water from the wool. Then Gideon said to God, Don't be angry with me. Let me ask just one more thing. Please let me make one more test. Let the wool be dry while the ground around it gets wet with dew. That night God did that very thing. Just the wool was dry, but the ground around it was wet with dew. 